God bless you, Big Cubs, Reverend Stanley. Good to be on here tonight. As we go ahead and get started on our expectation moment, I thank God for those of you who are on on this Friday night. I know some of us uh, have some things to do, but I'm grateful that you took a few moments to come together that we may study the Word of God together. I want to just share a quick testimony. I was riding an Uber today, and um, and I was just sharing a, a little testimony. The lady was and her husband was were, uh, engaged in ministry. Uh, he was a pastor, and she was really just uh, moved by St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church. Because she said, well, when y'all have Bible study? I said, well, I need teaching about, you know, a little later this evening. She said, oh, y'all have Friday night? I said, no, we have every night. So she was shocked. She said, well, how long? I said, well, 1,000. So I said, night would be 1,714 days. And she went, and she began to praise the Lord. That there was such a church uh, in this world. She didn't say this city. In this world who studies the Bible all the time. And so we're grateful for what God has done in our midst. And I want us not to ever stutter step and forget just how good God has been to us. Uh, on our theme, um, that what God has for you is for you. Um, we're going to pick up tonight in the book of Romans. Uh, the purpose of these lessons is, is for each of us to have a level of understanding about God's provision in our lives. That's what we're talking about, God's provision. Uh, there are many things that cause us, sometimes it's internal doubt, sometimes it's external forces, sometimes it's the attack of the enemy. Satan himself tries to get us to forget or or doubt that God has blessings for us and God can strengthen and keep us. And so tonight, I want us to take a moment in the book of Romans chapter 11 so that we can kind of understand the very real faithfulness of God. We know that God has um, required, desires things from our lives in order he can give us what we want. Um, but what we must understand is that, that, that there's never any doubt in God. There's never, no, there's no doubt in God. All of us who have kids or have been kids, we remember uh, that there were some things we had to do to get what our parents had for us. And likewise, for God, it's not that God is 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 messing with us. God wants us to do these things for because it's for our benefit. It's for our, it's for us to draw closer to Him. It is not that God is just trying to bribe us. That's what I'm looking for. But instead, God is trying to bring us uh, in a closer walk with Him. But what we must remember is just the pure faithfulness of God. Now, in the Book of Romans, we're all pretty familiar with the first chapters one through eight. Because in these chapters, uh, Paul gives the apostolic doctrine to the church in Rome. He expresses them the need for salvation. He expresses them the method of salvation through faith. He expresses to the benefits of salvation in chapter 5 and chapter 6. Uh, he talks about the weakness of the flesh. In chapter 7, he talks about the weakness of the flesh. In chapter 8, he talks about the power movement of the Holy Spirit that causes us to be able to live for the Lord. He also shares the benefits of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, um, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. He reminds us that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and the call according to his purpose. He reminds us of these things about uh, just sanctification, justification, and glorification. He reminds us of some wonderful things in chapter 8. But then, and this is sometimes, and I honestly can admit that I have only taught this a few times, begin between chapters um, uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11, it's like an interlude. Paul pauses in this in this teaching session uh, to share a few important thoughts and remembrances of God. In other words, as he as he talks about chapter 8 and goes to the high mountains of what God is able to do in chapters 9, 10, 11, if possible, he even goes higher uh, to remind us of truly how faithful God is. See, if somebody makes a promise to you and you doubt and, and you realize, well, they don't never do what they say, you don't have, you don't really have confidence in that. Now, Paul seeks to show that God is a faithful God and as a result, we can have confidence in him. That's what he wants us to understand. That's what he wants us to know. And so in chapter 10, um, Paul takes an, a, a, a spot and begins to talk about how God's and what God's interaction with Israel was. God lets the people know in, 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 Rome, in Rome and lets us know today that God's people, his chosen people, were the people of Israel, that God desires them. He called them. Those are his people. In chapter 11, he lets us know uh, that that because of Israel, Christians today have an opportunity to have a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. In other words, were it not for, uh, and it was all God's divine plan, were it not for um, Israel, so the Jewish nation's reticence, or I should say hesitance, to receive Jesus as Savior, we would have not been able to be grafted into the body, into the family of God. But in chapter 11, he talks about God's mercy on Israel. Um, and then beginning in chapter 11, verse 25, he talks about God's mercy on all. And that's why I want to start tonight. Chapter 11, verse 25. 
Here's what it says. <clears throat> Paul says, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant at this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own concerns, conceits, rather, that blindness in, in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles become in. He says, look here, Christians, I want you to know that this is the mystery, but this is God's plan. That the blindness, the reason why Israel has not received Jesus as Savior uh, is that God would use their, again, blindness so that all of us can come in into the body of Christ. In verse 29, he says, so all Israel shall be saved. He said, that's done. That's going to happen. Yeah, somebody said, well, Israel been on this show, to God. So what? God chose him. And guess what? God's going to save them. Um, in verse 26, he goes on to say, as it is written, that shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Not only is God saying, is Paul saying that God has told him that Israel shall be saved. He's saying it's a fulfillment of prophecy um, that, that Zion will come out, out of Zion will come out of the deliverer. That's Jesus who will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, God's people. So the, the, Jesus has come. But as Jesus moves further, as Jesus is his fullness is revealed. That's the word. If his, as his fullness is revealed, um, but ungodliness will leave Jacob. What does that mean? That means they'll turn back to Jesus Christ. Verse 27, this is important. God says, for this is my covenant unto them. God says, I made a promise. I made a covenant. I made a pact. And he said, my pact is I will take away their sins and bring them back to me. And so no matter what Israel does, guess what? God is going to do what he says. I want y'all to hear that again. No matter what Israel does, God is going to do what he says. Now, let me bring that up to 2024. Because we're God's children, his promises to us is not contingent upon us. Now, I don't want everybody to get carried away and say, I can do what I want to do because God is faithful. No, we should rejoice and be moved to more obedience because God is what? God is faithful. Now, in verse 27, he says, this is my coming to them when I will take away their sins. In verse 28, he says, it's concerning the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. He said, they are enemies for your sakes. Who? The, the people of Israel, in, for us, are sometimes portrayed as, as, as enemies for our sakes. But the, the reality is, is it, 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 is, is, it is only because um, they're, they're, again, hesitance to receive Christ uh, causes us who have been elected to end up being beloved by God. God loves Israel, period. And for us who are Gentiles, because we're not Jews, it is God's love for us, for, for Israel through his patience that has made an opportunity for us to come to Jesus Christ as our Savior. Now, let me read verse 29, and I'm going to stay here for a minute. Here's what Paul says. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Whatever God decides and whatever God chooses to do, he will not change his mind. God will not say, oh, I made a mistake by blessing Reverend Stan too much. No, he's going to do it. Because that was he, that's his his covenant. See, God can't go back on his word. God can't say, I'm gonna do this to change my mind. So I change my mind. That's not who God is, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as a direct result, as Christians, we must understand this reality. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In other words, when God says it, that's it. It's signed, sealed, delivered. If, if you like um, uh, 70s music, that dots it. If you like 80s, 90s music. But what I wanna say is when God says it, the truth is that settles it. It's all done. It's all complete uh, in Jesus Christ. And so that's what I want us to understand. What does that mean to us today? That means that as Christians, we must understand that God's will will be done, number one. Number two, we must understand that what God has for us is ours because God is not going to Indian give. He's not going to say, well, I decided I was going to bless. Now I changed my mind because they've been acting funny. We, uh, it, it, the, the, even, even the concept of restoration, it's contingent not upon us. It's contingent upon God. God will bring us and accept us back into the, the, the family and fellowship. That's the word I want to use. And the fellowship It's just a matter of people turning back to Christ. During these last seven months, I continue to pray that fellowship, that many people in Christ who have walked off, slid off, fallen off, whatever, will come back to Christ and have their restored fellowship. Then why does that happen? That happens because we serve a God who does not change. In other words, if you, you may push pause on your blessings and your breakthrough, but when you come back to Christ, guess what? They're still lined up for you. How about that? How about God doesn't give away what we, what we walk away from? Instead, he holds it until we get back in line. God does not say, well, it's too late. I've changed my mind. He says, I'm going to hold on to this for you. Reverend Stanley, years ago, 
I, I was flying in Nebraska and I, I left a, um, a, a bag, a night bag I had on the plane. And honestly, I have forgotten about that bag. I flew another two or three years and, and, and came one day, I lost something I really wanted. And I came to the lost and found over there at Delta. And I said, uh, my name is Eric Thomas. And I, uh, I lost the bag. You have it. They brought me two bags. I said, I only lost one. She said, well, no, you lost this one back here, 2012. And I had to start laughing. They held my bag for that long. Well, how about this? How about this? God is like that, but more. God would not only give us what we lost and what we left behind, but God would give us that as if it was never left behind, as if it was never lost. Why? Because that's who God is. God does not change. He does not hold us hostage. Instead, God wants us to draw closer to him, and God wants to give us what he has for us. And here's the thing I learned about God. When you come back to God, not only does God not um, penalize you, but instead God blesses you as a result of coming back to him. Again, this is not me saying you should walk away, but this is just letting us know how good God is. Now, imagine this. Imagine you're walking faithfully to God, with God. Imagine you're, you're being obedient to God. Imagine you're imagine serving and worshiping and praising God. Imagine singing and praising his name, even when you're by yourself and praying all the time and reading his word. Imagine if God would be patient enough to bring you back when you've walked away. Imagine what God would do as we walk in obedience to him. What God has for us is for us. It may not come in our time, but it's going to be on time. And so for the child of God, it, it, it is in, 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 in incumbent upon us to walk by faith and not by sight walking obedience, trusting God that he would bring about what he has promised. I'm going to let y'all go tonight at 718 because I sure want to see some of y'all tomorrow and I can't wait to see everybody on Sunday. Again, I do want to remind everybody Sunday is our college day, college and young adult day. So I want y'all to do a couple of things. Come on to church. Then if you've got a young adult or college student in your life, bring them. If you got a favorite college, whether you went there, that's just your school. Come on, bring your waist shirt because we're going to have a good time in the Lord on this coming Sunday morning. We're going to worship, we're going to fellowship, we're going to hear a word, and we're going to show love to some young people who are coming to join us to see what God would do. God bless you tonight. Let us pray. Father God, it is in the name of Jesus that we come tonight, Lord, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, because you deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You, Lord, are, are, are your promises, Lord, what you say, your gifts and your calling are irrevocable. Nobody can change it, and you won't change it. And so we stand here today, Lord, firmly uh, with the knowledge, Lord, that you're going to do exactly what you said. God, let us rest assured in that. Let us hold on to that, Lord, and let us rejoice even anticipatorily in expectation of the things you bring about in our lives. Let us listen to you, hear you, and walk in obedience to you. God, we love you. God, we thank you, and God, we praise you. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hold on, Zoom line. God bless your phone line. Are now unmuted.